So, obviously a pleasure on Real AF to have Aaron, who is a kind of a matriarch in our industry. And I, I honestly don't know a lender, realtor, anybody who's done successful business in this industry who doesn't know your name and hasn't gotten help from you, myself included at some point. I think Aaron Schiller was one of the very first names I heard in our yeah. industry. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. It's crazy. So <laughs> thank you for taking the time. You can <laughs> join. It's my pleasure. I'm so excited. Yeah, we've been excited as well. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. So how long have you been in the industry for? Um, total 35 years um, working in it, but I've actually been in the real estate industry since I was eight years old. Oh, wow. Since 1978, so you can do the math. So were your parents in the industry then? Yes. Or? Okay. So my parents were real estate, uh, had a real estate company up in Portland, Oregon, and Vancouver, Washington. And um, when the interest rates hit at 21% in 1981, so when we talk about interest rates right now, it's kind of like, I've been through the worst. <laughs> uh, <relative. laughs> my, my parents lost their multi-million dollar real estate company. And uh, we had to uh, pick up everything and we moved to Reno in 83. So I've been here 40 years. And then out of that 40, I've been working in it 35 years. Okay. Did you start as a realtor here or where did you start? Actually, I was a real estate assistant. So I worked at a real estate company called Realty 500, um, started as an assistant while I was going to college. And then for five years, I was running an actual franchise. Um, it's called Realty 500 Franchise and I ran their education and also the franchise um, corporate administrator. So I was going to college and doing that for, at a very young age but they uh, had known that I had the background and, and kind of put me into that little position. So, very and then cool. I got in the title industry in 1996. 1996, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. so as somebody who is a veteran in the teaching industry and is fairly new to the real estate industry, 35 years, almost <laughs> like those pictures of the before after cities where you have, you know, before the boom and then after, you've seen a lot. Well, differences oh a lot of differences <laughs> i mean when i started in the industry uh we were we didn't have computers we didn't have cell phones we had yeah. you yeah. know i had pager i had a pager <laughs> that was it the big the phones were this big and this <laughs> thick and you know they were huge yeah. so i mean we we just didn't have the technology um everything was typed everything Type was writers, you know picking up the phone you got the dialing phones you know uh, when I had a page, I had to ask the real estate company if I could call my office, you know, to pick up a package or whatever. It was not anything like it is now, and it is definitely different. Would you say more for the better or worse? That's a difficult question. Yeah, lots of... Because <laughs> there are so many simplicities to back in those times where things were simple. We... Back then, when I started, we only had a three-page contract, oh, not a ten. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have the disclosures. People were not sue happy. Yeah. People, you know, I think that the consumer really understood what a lender did or what a real estate agent did and what a title company did. And I think it's been <laughs> unfortunately muddled through the fact that we have internet and people are getting the wrong information out there. That is interesting. That's true. There's so much information out there, and unfortunately, I'm sure. So much of it is false. false. Yeah, yeah, it is false. Scary. Very, very false. And it's, you know, I and I, I will say there's definitely some uh, really great things because with technology we can do things faster. But, you know, that simple, uh, you know, handshake and conversation that we had and building relationship, some of that has gone away because now we have social media. And so instead of picking up the phone and getting caught up with people, you just go on social media and find <laughs> out how people are doing. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, I kind of miss those days, but, and I miss going into offices and talking to people, you know, you go into offices and it's like, there's hardly anybody there, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 I have a visitor. I mean, every couple of months, probably. And I'm like <laughs> putting my chairs in the right place. Right. And I'm like, I don't right. get people very often. How <laughs> yeah. are you? Yeah. It's, it's strange. Yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, there's actually yeah. people in there, you know? I mean, I don't think I met you for several months <laughs> before we were friends on social media yeah. and there's yeah. a lot of people like that. It's actually yeah. pretty sad. Yeah, it is. It's, it's definitely changed. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, there's, there's some wonderful things that have happened with the technology side. Um, but I do kind of sometimes wish we could go back to just no cell phones, no distractions. That cell phone is a distraction for everybody. I think there's just too much going on. And, and you know, I got to a point where even I told my daughter, 
she was having an argument with one of her friends and they were texting back and forth and I said, pick up the phone, mm -hmm. pick up the phone and talk to your friend. Yeah. Don't, or do it in person, but don't yeah. do it over text anymore because I think things get muddled yeah. when you do that. And I think so. you'll say a lot of things that you won't say in person. Yeah. You just type it so quick and you right. never would have said that if you were in person. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I've had to pick up phones because things have been kind of misunderstood when I've texted or emailed someone. It's yeah. like, okay, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm totally going to... And the inflection of your voice can be so different yeah. when you do that. And it, I think it really connects with people a little bit differently. Sure. So, yeah. 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 So I got to ask you, um, obviously, uh, as somebody who's a little newer to the industry, there's a whole group of people that I see who are kind of the old veterans. Out of that group, there's a few that are very nurturing, mentoring, mm -hmm. and then there's a lot that are just really old and haggard and not just not pleasant people. What I think is really phenomenal about you is that you have built your empire and you help the little people. Like I I started, I had like one transaction under my belt and you sat down and had coffee with me. The how, Bebo's, I yes. remember that. <laughs> yeah. How do you maintain that positive, because I mean, it's, it's grueling. I, it's a grueling industry, it's tough and there's a lot of money, so there's a lot of people who, um, just to be candid, are, are unscrupulous. How have you maintained your positivity, your just your benevolence through all that? Well, this is where I was kind of telling you how raw do you want me to go? Because I know, you want uh, to be <laughs> <laughs> so I'll I'll be very transparent. A lot of people have a perception of of me and maybe what kind of childhood I grew up in, and I had a very tough childhood. I I went through a lot as a child. And I did not have a very um, good male role model as a father. I had more of a mother who did both, um, you know, the, the, the husband and the wife and the, the mother and father figure. And yeah. she would have two jobs and, well, my dad wasn't really doing anything. And, and she's so, trying to be at home and raise you at the same time. Exactly, yeah. me and my sister. And so, you know, she was almost like a single mom, but with a husband that really wasn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. So we went, I went through a lot. Um, I went through poverty. I went through, um, you know, not knowing where my next place to live was going to be, to being wealthy to being poor again. And so, you know, there were a lot of ups and downs in my, my life. Um, but I will tell you that the one thing I, I really learned is a lot from my mom. Um, my mom uh, was a fighter from the day she was born as a kid, living in uh, very tough circumstances herself, and then watching her um, fight all the time. Yeah. always fighting to help us and to provide for us for us girls and so that was one of the things that I'll always and and still thank her for you know I talk to her every morning and I thank her Aww. for everything and um, but she taught me how to move on um, you know you you can't you can't just focus all the time on the negative and all these things that are around you uh, you've got to say okay this is let's fix it and move on and that's kind of my philosophy is I just keep persevering and going forward instead of looking backward. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people look at their past and they go, well, I'm this way because of my past. You know, you're this way because it's created who you are, but it's your future that you have control over. So I feel that being positive and bringing good uh, energy to the real estate community and talking about moving on, pivoting, uh, you know, I, I love the friends, and, and it's sad because of Matthew Perry. He was one of my favorite comedians and, and uh, actors. At that one scene where they said pivot, pivot, you mm -hmm. know, with. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always think about show. that. You know, it's like we we've got to pivot. We got to change. Our industry is never going to stop changing. So right. I knew, everybody thinks, okay, I'm, I've got it this way. I I knew that we were going to have to change, even with before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and right now. Right. It's always going to be because I've watched 35 years of it, actually 40 some years of it. So, you know, I, but going back to my, my family um, dynamics and things that I've learned is just moving forward and, uh, you know, um, and, and, and being, uh, being ethical, being moral, you leave. Um, that is always going to give you a good reputation. 
Yeah. Uh, when you do things on the side or not doing things that you feel comfortable and if you're personally not feeling right about it, don't do it. Yeah. So that's that's probably what's helped me in the industry. And that makes so much sense because you are tough, Aaron. Like you're tough. You When you go to a room, you own it. Yeah. And there's definitely... <laughs> I, I don't go into the room with you to get a warm fuzzy, but when we sit down at coffee, you're so nurturing, yeah. and there's that piece too. So that makes a lot of sense. So you know, a lot of a lot of moms out there, they take on those masculine and feminine roles at the same time, and that's all that's tough. But you do too, and that makes a lot of sense because because of your back. And then the ethical versus moral. I like that you touched on that because if I think of you, I think of ethics and morals because there's the things that get you in trouble and you end up in handcuffs mm -hmm. or at least fined sometimes. Mm -hmm. But there's also morality where you will absolutely get away with it. There are no laws or legislature saying don't do these things, but you're not going to do those things anyway. Yeah. And that's pretty synonymous with your name. So yeah, I well, appreciate that about my, you. My husband and I have a philosophy um, that we will not go to bed knowing that we did anything that would be the wrong thing to do. Right. You know, you, you can't sleep at night. We, right. we could never... Um, I think that's the thing. It's like to the consumer, to our clients, to our friends. You just, you've got to think about... Um, can you sleep at night yeah. knowing that you did something to someone? And I think that's where the, that's why we've continued to be, you know, in the industry as long as we have. Yeah. You and can't make it that long. I feel yeah. like your name is so well respected and and yeah, whatnot. It is years, just because <laughs> the truth comes out because of all yeah. the things you just said, and much more than that. I mean, you're an educator. You can tell you care about everyone. The energy you still bring forth it's amazing. Just like innovation, all the things you teach everybody and with this moral compass still fully intact is in extremely um, impressive and a ton of respect for you for Thank you. I, I don't take compliments. I know, but, I'm, um, I, but I, you should. But revel in it. You. you deserve a revel <laughs> yeah. in it. Own yeah. that. I, well, I just yeah. lo I love what I do. Yeah. I love what I do. I love what um, this industry has done for my family and my life. And I love the people I've touched. Yeah. You know, I, I totally believe in one thing, and, and it's kind of interesting, is um, the secret. You know, there are reasons people come into your life. I think there is a reason why we went to coffee. I think there's a reason we've been connected. Mm -hmm. I think there's a reason why even our video guy has been connected with us. You know, <laughs> I think, um, so, you know, you never know where someone's going to be a part of your life again mm -hmm. um, or how they're going to impact your life. And that's the one thing that I would say is if I if I die one day, all I want is people to say, hey, Aaron did something for me personally or touched me in some way. Yeah. And that's kind of my philosophy. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. So. And that's probably why you're still a pillar in the community 35 years later, because there's not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot of people that have been in that, had that longevity but also very positive. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are stuck in it, but that's a different yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But you you know, kind of, sorry yeah, to interrupt you. Yeah. You kind of already answered this, but um, maybe you want to add on to a little bit. Then, so what would be your number one advice, or maybe top three things, if you want, that you would give um, up and coming up and coming people in our industry, realtors, title lenders, whatever it may be, maybe anyone in business. Mm -hmm what would be your advice to them? It's hard. It is hard. Uh, the first, first thing that I would say is, you know, don't get mixed up with the noise. Um, don't always just focus. You know, when people get into the real estate industry, I always have to tell real estate agents specifically and lenders, uh, you know, you get into this business like you're a business, not I'm a realtor, I'm a lender, um, I'm actually building a business, and if you were owning or opening a boutique, for example, mm -hmm. what would you do? Well, you have a plan. You have a plan. You have a marketing plan. You have a business plan. You have a financial plan. Um, and then you also, how do you market yourself? Well, you have to advertise. You have to get out there. The thing in our industry that I see is a lot of the real estate agents and some lenders, but mostly real estate agents, don't realize how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. And also, they don't budget for that. So you have to have money behind you to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just, oh, I'm going to get my license and I'm going to get these leads. I think that's misleading. And we don't know really what our world's going to... You don't want to depend on leads and you don't want to really depend on others. You want to depend on yourself. Right. 
For sure. So, um, so you know, have a plan like you are building a business, uh, and you know, and have a you know, get out there, talk to people. You know, I think that's the thing is people are just not talking to people. And I think some of the pandemic also caused sure. people yeah. to be afraid of that. I agree. Um, and then also in, embrace technology, uh, but be careful about getting too focused on too many the apps and resources and things like that out mm -hmm. there because I see people just like spinning their wheels and they're just like a squirrel just going, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, I'm doing the same thing and nothing's happening. And it's because they're, yeah, I think, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right. So it, I think definitely embrace technology, learn the different things, and then choose some things that are actually working. And that's that would be my advice. Uh, but educate yourself. Yeah. Get educated. That's one thing that is huge, <sighs> I noticed, with you, for no. sure. Yeah. And I you're mean, very sharing with it. I feel like you don't keep anything to yourself. You're always willing to, you know, host lunch and learns and whatever they may be, you're always willing to share that with people. So we need yeah. to gobble it up. We do. I mean, in educating, you're never going to stop learning. That's the one thing about right. the, even the, our title industry. I mean, that's the one thing I love about my job is I have, I'm not bored. Yeah. There's always yeah. something new. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm always learning something. And, and so just learn as much as you can. But, you know, definitely focus on your business, focus on your financial plan, uh, talk to people, and then it will come. Sometimes it takes longer, but it will come. It so will do you come. actually have to work for it then? You exactly. Going back, um, I, I, I'd love to hear your insights on this because you're somebody who has gone through the peaks and valleys of, of the industry. You know your own personal uh, saga as well. But you said it's a hard industry, and I think from the exterior. I think a lot of people have this misconception that we punch a couple keys, make a couple phone calls, and then we mm -hmm. cash these fat checks. Talk to me about what's hard. I've obviously, in the five years I've been in, I've experienced some things. I've experienced some backstabbing, I've some mm -hmm. some tragedies as well. But I'm sure you've seen so much. There's just so much scope yet. What makes this industry so hard? You know, um, I would say probably one of the things is you've got to know uh, contractually what's going on. Um, I think contracts are a big part of our industry that you have to understand. And and know that you um, things are going to change. And a buyer and seller, there's an, it's an emotional factor, mm -hmm. right? I know you have experience with, with you know, the emotional side Absolutely. from a lending side and your side representing a buyer or seller. Sure. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the difficult, hard part of it is is the fact that they think it is easy, and it's not. I mean, and and if you have an industry like ours that's so up and down, it's like a roller coaster. There were times when, back in the financial crisis, back in 2008 to 2013, I was seeing some of the top producers in the industry who had beautiful homes and driving Mercedes and BMWs lose everything. Wow. And, and so they started from scratch. So don't think that this is easy because when the market shifts and changes in a positive or a negative way, um, it's going to affect a real estate agent and a lender and title. Like we're all affected right now by the industry. Um, so who's going to prevail are the strong, mm -hmm. uh, the moral, the ethical, the legal, have a good reputation, have a good reputation, be, you know, uh, can, completely educated on what's changing, yeah. uh, you know, do the right thing and be with the right companies. Um, I think that's what makes a difference. And so that's what I would say is, is the difficult side for, for the, a lot of the real estate community is, is that, that side of it, just that roller coaster, not yeah. knowing what's coming next. And the consumer, unfortunately, has a perception of our industries and I yeah. I need we need to change the dialogue um, of, of that we need to start giving them the real facts mm -hmm. of our our industries yeah. Yeah. I, I'm tired of consumers um, not understanding what title insurers do they don't know what a real estate agent does or what a lender does and what you yeah. what effort we put in just to close a transaction 
Definitely. They the don't sleepless know. nights and yeah. any tiny little minuscule thing changes. It's like yeah. yeah I mean, lots, we're, lots of things can change up to the very second before we close escrow. Yeah. And you know that because you we've all been a part of it. Dealing with it today. <laughs> oh no. Every day. But you know, <laughs> yeah, every day. But I think you gotta you gotta just shift and pivot when things happen, and you have to have definitely you have to have a backup. Um, and and understand okay what's if we can't do it this way how do we do it the next you know mm -hmm. next way um, you know so I, I think that's one of the the biggest issues I think in our industry and that's what's hard yeah. that's what's hard it's not a constant yeah. if you want a constant go get a job that you're salary. paid a salary yep. all the time I mean they a lot of people think that we get paid um, you know all the time and that we have all this money and I'm like no we don't. We don't get paid if you guys don't get paid. Yeah. Right. What not, I mean, a deal right. can fall apart and cl not close, and we don't get paid. Right. So all that effort that all of us put in, d you know, it's it c it's a commission side. So yeah. definitely, you know, it, yeah, we got to work together. I know. I agree with that as a goal. I think people need to understand, like, realtors, all of us in the industry um, can put in literally months and months of work. You can show people 800 houses spend every single weekend for months of your time and whatnot and you may yeah. not see a paycheck off of it yeah. and right you know, yeah. yeah yeah it's, it's not it's, like you just collect a, a, a salary <laughs> yeah. like you said just for being there from nine to four or whatever it means. right right no, you have to i have said if i ever got out of the business i would just be a sommelier and just pour wine oh that okay. would be my thing <laughs> as long as a little bit goes in my glass too yeah. i'm yeah. in yeah. <laughs> That's, that's going to be my retirement plan is love sommelier, yeah. so I'm, that's, you know, I love wine, I love chocolate, yeah. I love food, so I'm, I'll be happy with that. Too. Yes, we share that in common. So, um, you know, obviously, we talked a little bit about the uh, losing everything. What are some of the other highs and lows for you in this, in this career? Because I, obviously, from my five years of experience, you have established your kingdom. That's the high, but I'm sure there's been some other highs and lows. Yeah, I think um, I think some of you know the lows of our industry is uh, not the I don't we don't really have the power to control um, the market mm -hmm. and that can be frustrating because you know we've got seven office locations and over sixty employees and my biggest thing is to keep them employed and mm -hmm. that's all on our our management team and our sales team. So, you know, we're fighting for the business yeah, and, yeah. and going back to consumer, consumer doesn't really understand they have a choice. Um, consumer thinks I'm going to go with what my real estate agent says or recommends, but, or what my lender recommends on a refinance or whatever. But so we're fighting up against other companies in our industry right. to vying for this small pie. Right. We have a little pie. Um, and well, and the lenders and agents do too right now. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of pie that we have to fight for. So that's probably my biggest frustration and sadness in our industry is that we um, there's not enough to spread around. Um, and the other thing that I get a little bit concerned about is um, when companies, competitors, or whoever are not playing uh, with the rules. Yeah. Um, we have guidelines and rules and I definitely follow the rules. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. That's some. That's a little bit of my reputation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and they're like, well, Aaron, you know, Aaron's not doing this, but maybe another company will. Well, there's a reason. And yeah. and just like you said, we've been here. I've been here 35 years, and that is what has kept my reputation going is doing it right. Right. Um, and so that's probably one of the things is if people are just trying to. Um, manipulate this the industry or, yeah. or not providing the best services um, would you say it's worse right now when it's when there's less you know less deals to you know, going around and whatnot or worse when it's just too easy <clears throat> both okay that's it's interesting yeah there are different reasons yeah I think okay. um, I think there's there's I've seen a lot of things that have happened when the business is really great and hot uh, and then I've seen where you know when things get tough uh, this is where we okay. I'll do this for you if you do this okay, kind of thing, right. and yeah, yeah and yeah. I, it's just not worth it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and if that's where we're gonna head, I that that's not the right thing for the consumer. Right. Really, our job is to provide title insurance and escrow services to the consumer. 
Yeah. Your job is to be a real estate agent and represent that buyer and seller. And your job is to prevent the best lending program and loan program they can. Right. Not, we are not here to be, you know, um, it's not about us, it's about them. And I think that's the thing that people don't understand. And one of the, the fiduciary duties of a title company is representing the buyer and seller. Right. And people think we're representing the lender and the um, an agent, and we're really not. Right. We're, right. we're supposed to be representing the buyer and seller. Yeah, really we're the not. neutral third party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're the neutral third party. We don't right. have any, you know. So I that would probably be what what saddens me. Sure. Um, I also I don't. I think the other thing is is you know the direction that some of the real estate community is is gone as far as um, you know the things that they say about others and things like that. And we have to really be careful of antitrust. Yeah. Um, you know we have code of ethics as real estate agents sure. and lenders and, and industry professionals, and it concerns me when people are talking about other companies. Sure. We really can't. We shouldn't be. Um, I don't think that's fair. I know you don't like that. I know, and especially when there's th things that are not true. Right. Yeah. Especially. And it really yeah. just—you yeah. should look at that person and whoever's saying that. And it's really just—it really just makes you look bad. Right. right. You know, unless right. the person you're talking to is just as bad as you. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love better. it when people call me and go, "Hey, Aaron, I want to know the truth." Yeah. Love I'm that. like, thank you. Good. Let's start with that. Yeah. Right? With that. yeah. <laughs> don't start you know? Yeah. There. Yeah. You want you want yeah. the truth? I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. I'm and I'm very like transparent. I'll put everything on, on the cards on the table. I'm not afraid to say what I want to say, mm -hmm. and maybe that has been kind of my... <laughs> <laughs> some my people little, don't like that. <laughs> and I don't, some people don't, yeah. and it's like, they don't like that, but, you know, go somewhere else. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. but if they want the truth, they want someone who's going to be real with them, mm -hmm. talk to me. Yeah. Talk to me. Well, that's great. Going back in time, mm -hmm. what advice would you give yourself earlier on as you were embarking into this career? Uh -huh. Um, I would say, don't take things personal. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. yeah. I, I did that and it would eat me alive. Um, I, I had things in my, in my history, in my career that, uh, people saying things or things that, um, had been done or, or said about our company or about me. And, and I just, I realized it's like, you know, that. I can't take that personal. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that That's would good advice. be my advice. Three Thick words. Skin. Thick skin. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, really, if you're doing well, the the higher you climb on the hill, the more notoriety you get. The more notoriety you get, the more jealousy there's going to be. So if you're succeeding, you know you're drawing a target on yourself. So I think that's really good advice. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think some people just um, can take that too too heart, and yeah. then. I remember one of my mentors told me, he's like, you know, you just got to slip it off. You know, yeah. Aaron, you can't, you can't take this personal. Yeah. So I have a story to share. Um, when we opened uh, Tycor 20 years ago, my husband's mentor, Bill Hanks, um, he ended up passing away a year into our, our company. Mm -hmm. And um, right before he passed away, he gave me some really, really wonderful advice and he was it was my last phone call with him it was my last conversation with him and he's always saying this behind me uh he said he goes aaron always take the high road always take the high road because and and i think there's times where i don't want to oh, and sure. but i just have to always remember bill's telling me take the high road take the high road so that was that was a very impactful thing in my yeah. in my career and having mentors that that have have guided me and done things to give me opportunity but also to educate me in business i sure. think you learn from everyone kept yeah. it on your mind yeah. like no matter what anyone else does you're yeah. going to stay true to yourself yeah. and you're lucky you had that he was a great man he, great yeah. mentor and yeah. that he passed that along to you and now yeah. we have you to pass it along yeah, to us exactly. and remind us every day yeah. right. that kind of segues <laughs> into our last question so obviously your name is pretty synonymous with a lot of really superlative things if you had to kind of break down and simplify what is it that differentiates you from so many other people that are in the same industry do some of the same exact things or things that are in periphery, mm -hmm. but your name is so well revered and respected. What differentiates you? What are the, th if you had to break it down to the three things that makes you so different? 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's so sweet. Um, you know, I think what makes me different is I am absolutely a straight shooter. Yeah. I am absolutely honest, and I'm going to tell you how I feel. Uh, I'm going to be honest about what the right thing to do. And I would say that the, the knowledge side of it, I mean, I don't know everything about title and escrow. I'm not an escrow officer. I'm not a title officer. But mm -hmm. I love to educate, and if I don't have an answer, I'll find one. Yeah. So I think that's kind of been my little superpower. Um, yeah. But I think, too, the other thing is, um, you know, you, you can't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. And you got to give people a chance. Yeah. you got to give people a chance. And I've, yeah. I'm just one of those that's always going to give you a chance. Uh, although there are people that will cross you and, and will do things, yeah. and, and it's sad. Yeah. But you move on, you move yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, but I think really it's it's honestly just, I, I'm just a, a straight, straight up person. I'm, I'm never going to not be honest or, or forthright. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Uh, and sometimes that can be not taken very well. Yeah, right. sometimes people don't want to hear it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's it's so refreshing because okay. we're in an industry where game face is such a thing and it perhaps goes to an extent to where there's a lot of fraudulent personas, which I think is actually really bad for our industry. I think it's yeah. good to be courteous. I think it's good to be a professional, even when things are not as they should be. But I think we've gone to an extreme. And so you're, you're in such juxtaposition to so many of us in this career who are sometimes a little bit duplicitous, where I know exactly what you're thinking, Eric. I've yeah. been in your classes. <laughs> I know exactly what you're thinking. It's never, it's never, it's never a question. Yeah. And yeah. Then that's super appreciated because of Sometimes the industry, we find it a little easier to, to, like I said, to promote a fraudulent persona just to get the deal done, just to get what we want. I'm definitely not fake. No. And I won't be. You're on and the right channel. Yeah. <laughs> I am straight up, um, you know, and, and I've, I've raised my daughter that way. Mm -hmm. My husband's that way. My family is that way. We are, there's no fake thing, you know, and I'm not trying to be something I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think that's, and that's probably what's going to continue anyone in this industry is just be yourself yeah. and be honest mm -hmm. um, and do the right thing. Just do the right thing. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I was so excited about having you come in and talk about, because this whole thing has been created as a, like, I want to be real. Yeah. And so I was like, ooh. That's let's Aaron. Get let's, get, Aaron. <laughs> let's get Aaron. Yeah. She'll be real. Sometimes people don't like it. <laughs> yeah, but we love it. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. See, she's not All so right. scary. <laughs> she need anybody. It's good. I'm not that scary. Unless you make her be. <laughs> yeah. Don't get her. <laughs> No, I mean, and thank you for, for asking me to do this. I just feel yeah. so privileged and, and so, so happy beautiful. and, you know, thank you. And, uh -huh. yeah. And, <laughs> oh, thank you for taking the time. <laughs> We're very yeah. lucky to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. So this grateful you took the time out of your evening for us. Is yeah. there you. anything else that you feel like was left out that you want to add? Did we miss anything that you felt like you needed to be No, I, I mean, I, I definitely, um, you know, my... Uh, when I was telling you about the raw side of it, yeah. you know, it's interesting. Some people are like, oh, I bet, you know, even my family members, when we moved here, had a perception of my childhood that, oh, you guys had just everything. Silver and spoon, we, perfect yeah, childhood. Perfect life. Yeah. For, you know, you probably had everything <laughs> that you ever wanted. Yes, yeah, so it was a Disney you princess know, moment. Yeah, every I mean, moment. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah. um, you know, I started working at the age of 15. And and I did it to pay the bills for my parents. Wow. Yeah. And so, so was that when they moved here, when I when we moved here, um, and I'll share, and, and you guys can put it on because yeah. I don't, I'm very transparent. So when we moved here, my parents, um, my my dad went back into his original profession, which was he was a golf pro, and um, he he was uh, a teacher here okay. in town okay. and my mom uh, worked um, at Bally's Casino at mm -hmm. the time or the old MGM mm -hmm. and and then also got back into real estate. She actually was a top producer until 2010 and she retired. 
So she's 84 now. Um, and she, every morning, asks me, what's going on in real estate? You know, <laughs> it's like, she's <laughs> always wanting to know. I love that. Um, still curious. But, but, you know, when, when not having a father that is the father figure and he was yeah. kind of, a, you know, just a deadbeat, honestly. And yeah. I can say that I'm very, very transparent about that. Yeah. Um, and watching my mom work as much as she did, we just couldn't seem to make it. So at 15, I'm working and I would hand off all the money that I made in tips when I was working at a driving range and, and a golf course to my parents so that they yeah. could pay for their, their cigarettes or their, you know, our rent, our yeah. food. Um, yeah. And that's a 15 year old, you know, not, yeah. you know, that I've been working since I've been 15. So when people say, oh, Aaron, you've had it, you've, you've had it made your whole life. And then when I graduated right. from high school, I didn't have scholarship opportunities. Yeah. Um, and so, so I put myself through that. college. Wow. It took me seven years, but I but made you it. Did it. I did it. So you were working awesome. and going to school full time. Yes. And paying for your own school. Yes. Holy moly. Yeah. And That's amazing. And it was it was a uh, you know I I tell my daughter she's got it very she's very um, smart and she's gotten scholarships and I think it's amazing That's that she's so been able great. to do that. Uh, but when I told her, hey, I had two or three jobs, like if I was working and I had a, a weekend job or, you know, I was doing other things just to get that. And yeah. um, and during that time, I was in a relationship that was also mentally and physically abusive. And so I started that um you know, going deep, we're, we're going to go deep here. This person was almost the exact person that my mom was married to. Interesting. And so thank God I got out of that relationship and took about a year to uh, figure out who Aaron was, went yeah, through therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like really honed in on the person I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, that's when I met my husband. Um, and he and I were competitors. Yeah, oh, so that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He and he and I were competing against each other. Um, but he probably wasn't much competition for you. Oh, he killed me all the time. No, seriously, he was. I just want that. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, he definitely <laughs> was very good at what he did. That's so um, fun. But you know, that's when we started dating, and um, and then we worked um, against each other. We were competitors for eight years. I was. <laughs> I was at a title company, he was at a title company, and that's when Bill Hanks brought us together, and Aww. they opened Tycor and brought me over, and we became, you know, uh, yeah. doing this uh, doing this thing together for 20 years now. That's so awesome. we're celebrating in January 20 years at Tycor. Um, that's so cool. But, but you know, there, there's, you know, everybody's got a story. Right. And, I, and the advice I'd give anybody, find out the story yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's so surface. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, you know, this is this person. And the other day I went to lunch with somebody and I sat down with them and they were like, Aaron, honestly, I didn't know anything about you. I had the perception of what I heard about you, yeah. but I had no idea your story. Right. And when they get down to the story, anybody's story, everybody's got a story yeah. that makes them who they are that kind of brings a lot out and then you right. connect and then you find out you know i was going to coffee and i heard your story right. um becky and i need to go have drinks and have our story yeah, right? sure. but, but, <laughs> but you know it's but that's the thing it's like there's there's a lot to where people become and why you know you're you're mentioning my confidence and walking in a room i was shy mm -hmm. i grew up shy reserved afraid insecure it took me years to be where I am. So if I'm going to give any advice to anybody out there, figure out how you can be confident about yeah. yourself and not be afraid. Yeah. Um, you know, figure it out because, and be proud of who you are. Walk in a room. I walk in a room because I'm proud of who I am. There's nothing I'm afraid of mm -hmm. because I'm proud of who it is. Yeah. Oh, I, for that. Yeah, I felt that. Mm -hmm. So, but everybody's got a story. So that's my story. That's, why I'm in this industry, you know, there, there's just, you, you learn so much when you kind of really deep, go deep into yourself and find out like, who am I and why am I choosing to make the choices I am? Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's choices that people make that, you know, you can say no 
Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You can say no. Yeah. You can say yes. So just do what's right for you. Do what's right for your family. That's right. that would you know, and and that's where your reputation will continue right. yeah. is doing what the right thing to do for yourself and for your family and for your friends and people that that are around you. So and I think that's yeah. a huge a, another spotlight on why you're so successful is because you know you're looking deep inside and observing these things and that also makes you do what's best for your clients. Yeah. You're looking at them as people with yeah. a story and whatnot and not just a number yeah. and another deal to close. So. I every time I meet um an agent or a lender or a client, I always ask them, so tell me about you. Tell me about you. Tell yeah. me why you're here. Why did you choose real estate? What did you do before? Yeah. I don't want to, I'm not going for the deal. I'm, I'm going for the person. Yeah. That, that is the difference. Yeah. yeah. It's a relationship. Yeah, it is. So this business is a relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm still right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Longevity. <laughs> and sometimes it takes longer for some people to do business with you. <laughs> Hey, you just gotta, you gotta, you know, it's all in timing too, right? right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, sure. yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm all about loyalty. I'm a loyal person. Mm -hmm. So that loyalty is important yeah. to me. And, um, that's why, you know, I've stayed with my company for so long is I'm very loyal and I believe it. I believe in the company. Yeah. But I appreciate your story too. Um, I think we tend to superficially, worship the accomplishment like oh this person has x amount of money this person has x amount of but yeah. i always i always appreciate so much more the backstory like if the person had to climb 20 mountains to get there it's such a better story than the person who started as an heiress yeah so i appreciate yeah. that i yeah. think that's so much more thank inspiring you. thank you thank you all right awesome this all was right. fun yeah. yeah thank you so much <laughs>